to another episode of the Performance Cafe and today we've got a really special coffee companion. Now this coffee companion has been hiding behind the scenes for a while and has had a long-standing association with Forward Forward, my company, but uh, today we thought we'd introduce you to Shane and uh, I'll tell you a bit more about her. Let's just get her into the studio quickly. Hi Shane. Hi Innocent, hi viewers, how are you? I am well, thank you, and I am better now that you are here. So just to explain to our viewers, uh, the reason why you see me glowing is because Shane has actually been behind the scenes at Perform Forward Performance Cafe and everything else that I touch, uh, my public speaking, all of it, uh, being an active support to me and making sure that my world takes over. But as of January, she has joined our team uh, on a more permanent basis. And so the reason why I look so good is because Shanae is here to fix everything, which is why we call her the Chief Everything Officer. So Shanae, you've been at it for a month now in a, in a more permanent role. How are you enjoying the work? In a sense, it's been quite a challenge adapting to, you know, set hours and stuff. I'm used to freelancing and studying and there's no set time around that. So actually being in a setting where everything is timed is challenging, but also enjoyable because your day ends at a certain time. You don't force yourself to work after hours because you feel obliged to now. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And that, that is really a big thing. Um, how do you balance because you, you you do study, you're doing a degree in psychology. How do you balance the two? I mean, this is not a quick course you're doing. It's a couple of years that you're committing now. Well, it's very challenging. You have to time manage quite well. Um, I'm very used to working with data and numbers and stuff. So what I actually did is I just set a time on my time. I made a time sheet and then I do everything like that. I've scheduled my classes, I schedule my times, everything just surrounds like this big schedule. So that's a bit of a weird answer because I thought all millennials were, I don't know, unstructured, all over the place, still staying with their parents. You know, <laughs> what happened? Are, are you not the, the stereotypical uh, millennial? <laughs> Actually, I think all millennials are quite different, um, but from what I've experienced with the millennials I know, we actually generally very pedantic about things. We quite specific and always like anxious. <laughs> and I think a lot of that actually stems from we grew up in between two very different generations. The one was very relaxed and the other was very corporate and formal and so we've experienced a bit of both and I think being a millennial you can lean either way. Ah. Is this why we see this drive where millennials sort of are redefining our workplace where they're not so, where they're going well you know that's not going to work for me you know this is where I want to have it done. People see that as quite you know, forward. I mean, a couple of years ago, you guys were still kids. Yeah. Is that, do you think that's where it comes from? I think so. Um, millennials are also known for, well, among us, I don't know if it's known to other generations as much, but we're very known for overthinking. So usually when problems do arrive, we've probably already thought about it. Um, not just at work, but in general, we do overthink a lot and we always have a plan yeah. So it's so interesting. You might, you're starting to make millennials sound quite acceptable. We, we better stop the interview because I'd, I'd hate to kill a whole bunch. I think there's a whole ageist industry, you know, around millennials. So I think, I think we must get off that topic entirely. Um, and so, you are, <laughs> so you are studying psychology. Uh, why psychology? What attracted you to that? So, I have a passion for understanding people. Um, social skills aren't one of my top skills, but actually understanding and listening. I think I find a lot of value in listening skills and I feel if I put those skills to use, I could make a difference in an individual's world. I feel the world caters for a large mess, like an audience, a large audience where psychology caters for individuals and 
I think being one of those individuals that never stood out, I think that's why I find, like that's why I love psychology so much because I get to make that one person feel like they're not just a number. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> so given your background now in psychology and the bit of work that you've done with um, Perform Forward over the past years, what does performance mean to you? Now, the reason I'm asking this question is so often when I ask this question, I'm asking people who have nine to five jobs, married with or without children. I think you're probably the youngest person that we've ever interviewed on Performance Cafe. <laughs> and you, yeah, you, yeah, you see, you're special. Um, <laughs> but also from the perspective of you're working, you are studying, um, you work from home predominantly. I mean, you are the embodiment of what we think of as the new world of work. So what is performance to you? So performance, when I think of performance, I think of like a watch and it's got all the little parts that make it work. And much unlike a watch, I don't feel like those parts have to work in specific times. They just have to work right. And if cooperation and time management and just general more warmth and humanity. Mm. I feel like that really boosts performance and yeah. <laughs> and you were talking about more humanity in business. Mm. Um, what has your experience of previous business been, not necessarily with Perform Forward, but I know you worked like in the retail sector and that. Um, how much humanity is there in those areas? So, my friends that work retail and I always used to joke that one year that you work in retail is 10 years that you age because it's stressful. People mm -hmm. see you as like a robot that just, because we provided a service. It wasn't just sales. It was, we did printing and stuff. And people really expect that you just instantly print something. And as much as I'd like to do that, because I do like making people happy, I just, you know, it's impossible to do that. And so working in the retail industry has put a lot of strain on many people. Some people do make it work. If you're extroverted and the hours are right and you get compensated enough, then it's fine. And I see, I'm glad to say that I've seen a lot of retail companies doing this now, which is mm. amazing. But from my past experience, it's been, it's, it was a lot of hard work and challenging. And I was very dehumanized. Like okay. I was a robot to... Okay the boss, the clients, co-workers, everyone just has a role to play and you just keep quiet and you do your part and that's all. Okay, yes. And as you said, there's there's no place for growth, there's no place for you. You aren't a being, you're just a, a little machine mm -hmm. that produces. Yeah. So to come back to your lovely analogy about the watch, that mm -hmm. all the pieces must move and they must work, but they don't have to work all at exactly the same time. How do you feel and I'm going to ask you on behalf of all millennials again. We're back. We seem to keep going back. <laughs> I'm honored to be the millennial representative. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Um, how do you, as a millennial, measure success? Um, obviously, when you do run a business, there is like a financial mark that you have to make. But I, I'm a firm believer that it's not about that. Because, you know, you can do a lot of things to make money, but you can't do a lot of things to succeed. And I think creating a family, not family, but necessarily just a co-working system that really works well together and continues producing. I think that's what I'm trying to say is that it's more, it has to be a continuous process. It's not just one job gets done, you get paid for it and that's it. It's to constantly keep that balance of, like priorities and tasks and relationships in a business that'll give you success i think and success itself is not just about the numbers you make but i think the lives you change oh well coin that term success is not <laughs> about the numbers you make it's about the lives you change that is a fabulous <laughs> quote i would definitely put that on <laughs> not only if i was you so so I'm hearing work-life balance mm -hmm. and 
and and and and I was wondering where does that need for work life balance come from? I mean, many people my age, because I'm at least three years older than you, don't laugh. <laughs> um, we only learned about work life balance after we burnt out. Mm. What made you what made millennials sort of scoot up and and attach that value so much sooner? I think with millennials in general, um, we've had to work a lot harder and a lot more efficiently because obviously the income's not the same as it was. Inflation has taken a major toll and we're just constantly aware of the pressure that we're under. And I think so millennials also burns out. And I think uh -huh. many millennials I know, they do, they don't know when to stop because they feel like they owe someone something and they don't know who they owe it to, but they're constantly driven to just keep going. And I think the burnout is going to be intense when it happens. Mm. Um, but for me personally, I think with my first year of studies, I completely burnt myself out and I wasn't even like part-time employed or anything. And I think the key is knowing when to stop. And it's not just, but not just that, it's also about relationships in work. So if you're working with someone that you're comfortable around and you can be open to, then I can be like, listen, innocent, I'm burnt out. I just did this assignment. Is it fine if I just work like odd hours here off and on just to just catch my breath a bit? And I'm comfortable in saying that. And that's important because if I wasn't, then, you know, I'm going to be like, okay, so I'm burnt. I'm too scared to tell my boss that I'm burnt out. Mm -hmm. I, mm. I just carry on working. I burn out even more and I end up leaving because I become depressed and anxious and I mm. feel like I can't keep up with everything. Mm. So having that open relationship is very important. I, I agree. So you mentioned a really interesting thing and it's something that I've, I've often found very difficult is when you're speaking with someone who is very motivated and who is running hot and is just chugging and working and working and working and working what do you think is a good way to say to them you need a pause what's a have you been able to convince someone of that and how did you do it teach us well if you're a millennial as you said earlier we're quite forward so you could literally be like you know, <laughs> take a breather, <laughs> calm down. And yeah. I think reassurance is important. I think we fear feeling like failures so much that as long as we know we're doing good work and it's okay if we do rest. So the more long-term answer to that question is to be to continuously remind your millennial workers that, you know, they're doing, they are doing good work. They just need to take a break in between and I think we will feel more comfortable taking breaks if we know the work we're doing is worth it like we're doing good work and stuff mm. and valuable as well mm. Mm. so <laughs> interesting interesting question then um, so you're saying that actually instead of the sense of entitlement and we don't want to work there is actually the need to work. It's about making sure that our work is seen, appreciated, and that we get feedback mm -hmm. to say you've done well, or actually, you know what, we need to tweak something. Mm. How important is that feedback, do you think? Very important. For millennials, especially important. Um, we're very fragile creatures. <laughs> You know, the housing market has affected everyone. <laughs> the housing no, market. So it's like every millennial always jokes about the housing market. It's a thing. <laughs> okay, right. Um, I'm not a millennial. <laughs> so it's just because back in the day, like your parents are always like, when I was 22, I bought a house already. And then we're like, yeah, because it was like 100,000 rand. <laughs> it was doable. <laughs> And now it seems like a goal that's too far to reach. And I think in like the essence of that joke is that we do, we are living in a time that's quite difficult, especially with COVID that happened now. It's especially difficult to find a job. And because of your age, you often, you don't get hired because you don't have the experience. You know, everyone wants you to work for exposure if you're a millennial as well. Mm -hmm. And internships get taken advantage of. And it's, it's very difficult to feel 
like you do valuable work when you're working in like an environment like that. Yes. Yes. So the feedback is very, very important. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Look, I love that that's what millennials brought because I, I was thinking that myself, but I'm too old, so no one cares when I say it. So I'm glad <laughs> that the whole age group is now doing this for me, you know, supporting me in this. <laughs> um, and so to come back to the question, we were talking about measuring success, and you said it's about not just about what you get out of work, but what you get out of relationships. So mm -hmm. I think the one thing that, that the other sort of stereotype that we have around millennials is you were basically born with a digital gadget in your, ha in your hand. So mm -hmm. you can learn anything digitally. One of the biggest issues we have with remote working and hybrid work and stuff, as you know yourself, is people feel incredibly threatened by digital media and, and by losing that connection because we're talking on Zoom. We're not talking face to face. You guys don't seem to have any problem with it. So how the heck do the millennials keep the connection? And what can I, what can we as businesses learn about how to use those same channels to create that connection? Well, I actually think that as much as millennials do seem to be good at building relationships online, I feel that physical connections is also actually very important. I think we just limited an opportunity with being able to do that. And so when you have to work remotely and there's no other option, I think it's really nice to, well, it's really effective to check in with people, to constantly make sure that how are they doing? Like, how's everything going? Not just work related, but building a relationship outside mm -hmm. of that. You know, send someone a meme. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's 2022. Yes. Memes are accepted now. So <laughs> just like... Oh. So memes and millennials are now both accepted. Yes. <laughs> the future is now. <laughs> mm, yeah, okay. I think, mm. yeah, no, building those relationships are very important physically. I think even just once meeting someone in person is important, but it's not needed for every day because socially, if you put all your energy into social interaction, then you're going to not have enough energy for the rest of the work. Mm. So I feel like that's where millennials especially benefit from working remotely. Because as millennials, we are very socially limited. We don't have that. I think they are extroverted millennials and they do enjoy that social interaction. But many millennials that I know are introverted. And so a lot of energy goes into social interaction when it really shouldn't. And then we struggle to focus on work in other areas. And so that's why remote work has got a lot of people. I think introverts especially weren't really noticed before remote work. And now that everyone's working remotely, the manager maybe sees that this person that's been introverted that I don't really know is actually working the hardest. And the other people that I respected more, I respected them more because of a social relationship. So I do think there's a very like fine line and a balance between the two that does need to take place. Mm. So an interesting thing, let's assume that you have a manager and it is a typical, you know how I rant on about the first industrial revolution. It's yes. one of those managers. It's a person who's never really been great at creating contact before. It's someone who likes managing using bums on seats so I can see them. They can't work remotely. They can't, they're not a watch. They're not a watch. They're a little puppet on a string and I'm holding the strings, right? Hmm. what if you say reach out to someone this person's not used to doing it hmm. and you also might not have the reciprocal relationship that it's okay if the person goes oh hello how are you how's your how's your relationship with your significant other <laughs> what's a good intro what's a good intro that that starts that connection do you think um, that's a very difficult question um especially because my train of thought never really revolves around that. I'm a firm believer that people think of work relationships and they completely ignore the word relationships. And yes. relationships are about compatibility. So if you have a manager that's used to working with numbers, there are employees that are used to being like, that enjoy being treated like that. There's like a compatibility issue that a lot of people ignore and 
Yeah, you know, there's always Mic someone drop. for someone else. <laughs> Mic drop. I never thought of that. You are <laughs> absolutely, that is actually such a great insight. You're right. There are people who don't want that connection and who yeah. don't want to read that connection. So yeah. maybe to get back to my Performance Cafe perspective from this morning, which I was talking about the love languages, it is about mm -hmm. figure out that person's love language. How do they yeah. want to be connected with? Exactly. Um, it's, it's very challenging. I'm not like just going to pretend like it's easy to find work compatibility, but I feel mm -hmm. like if more time gets put into relationship building, then it would be a lot more efficient because no one has to feel like they have to fit into a box for someone else. They get to be themselves and be compatible with someone else. And ultimately that makes the strongest relationship, whether it's work, friendship, romance, if you, if you complement each other, it's the compliment thing that just really brings it out. That is very well put. I like that. <laughs> not, you know, if you're not trying to live into a box that's decided by someone else. <laughs> so, last question. The generation after the millennials are the Gen Ys, right? Yes. No, it's Gen Z. <laughs> the Gen Z. Okay. Yes, sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's start that from scratch. So, last question. As a millennial, and maybe not the youngest one of them anymore, so sorry mm -hmm. to say, but just to create the context. Um, what's the one thing you'd like Gen Zs to know about hopping the gap between where they're at and the world of work and what is expected there nowadays? That is... That's a very difficult question because I've actually found that with the Gen Zs that I know, they actually taught me a lot about these insights that I have about relationships and stuff. And I feel like when they do get into the world of work, because culture is so rapidly changing, they're going to have to learn their own lessons at that time. But right now, I just like, I would like them to know that it's okay to not burn themselves out they don't need to burn themselves out to be worth something because that's what that's where we all start we have this quarter life crisis and we feel like we have to <laughs> constantly just give and give and give otherwise we're not worth anything and I think that is the biggest mistake because as soon as you realize that you're a human being and you have human needs like rest then you actually function at a much higher and better level because mm -hmm. you're taking care of yourself and I think Gen Zs really struggle to take care of themselves right now. There's a lot of pressure on them. So I think it's important for them to know that they do also need rest. And I think it's important for the future managers to know that they need feedback. They need positive feedback and they need negative feedback as well. There needs to be a healthy conflict relationship so that they know. Because if you, passive, if you do something wrong and your manager is passive aggressive towards you, then it's not going to solve any problems and you're going to feel worse because you're going to know something's wrong, but you're not going to know what it is and you can't fix it. So I think learning that healthy conflict thing and hearing good feedback is really beneficial for them. Awesome. Shona, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so for everything that you've brought to the business already and I look forward to working <laughs> with you. And uh, I will be showing this video to absolutely everyone that is going to get your email address when we need to, <laughs> they need to reach out to you and, and get saved from something I've done awkward in the business. Like, <laughs> um, I'll come aboard and I look forward to many more cups of coffee with you. <laughs> Thanks. So as always, another great coffee companion. And I think someone who is going to rock the world at, at Performance Cafe and perform forward um, with such excellent insights and such a passion for psychology. As always, if you'd like to learn more about, well, Perform Forward, Performance Cafe, Shanae, myself, uh, please reach out to us. We are on LinkedIn and Facebook. And once you get there, please like, subscribe, comment, share, not subscribe. 
but let's just leave that in there. Uh, and then if you've reached out to us, if you've see, seeing us on YouTube, lovely to have you here. If you'd like to hear more from myself or Shanae, you just click on the subscribe link, like us, and then of course also uh, click on the notification bell so that you know when the next video is available. And until the next Coffee Companion, I look forward to seeing you. Happy performance, good day.